The Power of Gratitude, Stories About How Being Thankful Can Change Your Life by Amy Newmark and Deborah Norville. Being polite with everyone is something we've been taught by our parents and teachers since childhood. When you ask for something from someone, always say, please, never forget. When someone else does something for you, say thank you, never forget. By doing so, this world can become a better place to live. But there's a difference between saying thank you and truly being grateful. Being polite helps society become better, but being grateful makes you a better person and helps you live a happier life. It's easy to focus on the negative things that happen to you. If you keep doing that, you'll always be unhappy. But the stories in this summary prove how the habit of being grateful has the power to change a person's life. From facing financial difficulties to battling life-threatening illnesses, the habit of gratitude has helped many people overcome their challenges. The most important thing is that they are now happier and stronger because they have learned to appreciate what they have. The Beauty of Age Spots Connie was 40 when she first visited an esthetician. An esthetician is someone who treats any skin-related condition. Truth be told, Connie's visit to the esthetician didn't really mean anything. But she had a gift card for this clinic, and if she didn't use it, it would go to waste. Connie showed the spots on her hands to the esthetician, Andrea. Andrea tried to explain to her twice that these spots were just signs of aging. Andrea understood what Connie was trying to say. She knew that Connie was unhappy and troubled about her age spots, so Andrea gave Connie a cream. But Connie wasn't bothered at all. She was smiling and then burst into laughter. She was so happy that she hugged Andrea, leaving her amazed. Connie felt like having age spots and white hair was impossible. In fact, a few years ago, Connie was battling cancer. She never thought she would live to see a day when she could see herself grow old. Connie told Andrea about this, who now understood why Connie was so happy looking at the signs of aging. At the age of 60 today, Connie celebrates every sign of aging. It's the gift she had been waiting for for a long time. Note to self. Nine-year-old Alicia was angry with her mother. Her mother had told Alicia to go to bed at exactly nine o'clock. Alicia's anger wasn't because her bedtime was always at nine o'clock. Actually, she was angry because of what her mother did after she went to bed. Her mother used to go to her bedroom shortly after Alicia went to bed. But that night, Alicia saw her mother doodling on a piece of paper. Alicia was very angry. She was angry because today her mother was wasting paper, while just a week ago Alicia had asked her mother for some paper to draw on. Alicia needed paper to draw, but because it was expensive, her mother refused to buy it for her. Alicia started crying on her bed. She thought it was so unfair that she had so little money. On the other hand, some people could easily buy paper, pens, and crayons without worrying about money. The next morning, Alicia tried to ignore her mother. She said she didn't even want breakfast. Her mother wasn't bothered by her daughter's bad mood. Her mother, with a sigh, said, Well, I guess maybe you don't need this either. When Alicia looked at her mother, she had a bundle of paper in her hand. When she looked closely, she saw that there were pictures of her favorite cartoon characters on that bundle, like Winnie the Pooh, Tinkerbell, and others. It was clear that Alicia's mother had spent almost the whole night drawing those characters. Alicia was about to ask why she did it, when suddenly she remembered something. A week ago, Alicia's teacher had asked her to bring stationary paper to school because she had to write something for her friends. Alicia had told her mother about it, but her mother had said 
that Alicia should only use ordinary paper. She needed to spend money on more important things. Seeing how hard her mother had worked for her, Alicia couldn't help but smile. Doing her schoolwork, Alicia felt like she was the luckiest girl in the world. Finding 5 Helen is a passionate teacher who teaches young children. For her, engaging in various activities related to special events or holidays is preferred. Since November was Thanksgiving Day, Helen started looking for Thanksgiving Day activities online. During this time, Helen learned about The Legend of the Five Colonels. There are various versions of this story, but they all have a similar plot. The legend tells of a tradition among pilgrims where they would put five kernels of corn in each guest's plate. It's difficult to say what this actually means. Some stories say that pilgrims used it to show gratitude for the five things they were thankful for. Some say it indicates that difficult times are coming. Nevertheless, Helen decided to use this story in her class. She discussed it with her students. What are the five things they were grateful for? She said that if they could answer this question, she would give them five candy corns as a reward. Even after Thanksgiving Day ended, Helen did not forget about the legend of the five kernels. It was a very impactful activity for her, so she started making a journal where she began writing five blessings she received every day. This was quite easy for Helen because she realized how much she had to be grateful for. That day, she didn't get stuck in traffic. The school principal also praised her good work. Her student's behavior was good all day. And before going home, her colleague gave her some tasty bread, which relieved her headache. Don't misunderstand, Helen. Writing down the blessings she received was very good for her. But after a few days, she realized something. Why was her list focusing only on blessings she received herself? What if she focused on becoming a blessing for others instead? Helen continued to make her list. However, its content was slightly different now. Helen began to focus more on the five ways she could become a blessing to others. First, Helen helped a teacher she worked with in their daily tasks. Second, Helen received an interesting worksheet which she also shared with other teachers so they could use it too. Third, Helen helped a new teacher understand the school layout. Fourth, she volunteered for a charity game that weekend. And finally, Helen gave her crayons and colors to a teacher when hers ran out. Helen was very happy to become a blessing to others. It made her even more positive and caring. This changed her perspective. Before, Helen used to focus on the bad things that happened to her. Now, she started feeling grateful for the good things that happened to her and others. Sometimes, it takes a child. Joe and Elizabeth were going through a very difficult time. Joe had lost her job and their savings were running out. They were struggling to afford food. Unwillingly, Joe, Elizabeth, and their little daughter Kelly had to go to Joe's father Max's house. For them, going to Max's house was a difficult but crucial decision. They didn't have money to rent a house anymore. Since Mac passed away five years ago, no one had been living in their house. The condition of that house was very bad. It was very old and everything was broken here and there. Whenever it rained, its roof leaked. Its paint was also old and cracked. Seeing this made Joe and Elizabeth very sad. They wanted to make that house a little better for their daughter, but they didn't have the money to do so. Elizabeth also had to work so that their family could survive, but working as a cashier in the store was becoming very difficult for her. She had to work longer hours for less salary, and standing all day was causing pain in her feet and back. Being rejected from interview after interview made Joe even more frustrated and hopeless. When Elizabeth saw their backyard, she became even more disappointed. The condition of the backyard was just as dirty as the house. 
Seeing this, she became even more sad. She knew they were trying their best, but she didn't want to keep Kelly in such a dirty place. The only good thing about that place was that its backyard was very big where Kelly could play. Elizabeth was watching her daughter. Kelly happily collected yellow flowers there and gave them to her mother. Kelly said she really liked their new home. There was also an apple tree there which had delicious apples. Kelly also saw a bird with its babies on that tree. She liked everything there because there were butterflies flying around which she was chasing and she could smell the fragrance of flowers. Kelly liked her grandpa's house so much that she felt it was the best place in the whole world. Elizabeth was amazed to see this. Until her daughter pointed it out, she hadn't even noticed the good things present in that house. Elizabeth realized that even though they needed to repair that house, it was still a good place to live. Besides, what mattered most was that they were all together and safe. Elizabeth went ahead and did what? A child, Kelly made her realize, that they should appreciate whatever they had and be grateful for it. Being happy is enough. Kathleen was scrolling through Facebook when her eyes landed on a post by one of her friends. Her friend was on vacation in Europe at the time and looked very happy. A little later, Kathleen saw her neighbors receiving a delivery of a new TV. When their kids came home, they excitedly told Kathleen about a new gaming system they had, which their friends also had. Kathleen was feeling very sad and upset, but what else could she do? It seemed like everyone else had a lot of money except her. Kathleen and her family often had to buy clothes from their friends and their families. The essential things in their home were also old, and they had bought them all secondhand. They rarely ate out. Kathleen was a good cook and enjoyed cooking, but she wished they had some extra money so they could occasionally go to a restaurant. That night, Kathleen's mother-in-law came to see her. Kathleen was so upset that she vented all her frustration on her mother-in-law. Kathleen wanted to be able to spend money on whatever she wanted, but she couldn't. It was very frustrating and irritating. Her mother-in-law understood her feelings. She said that it's easy to focus on what you don't have, but if you keep comparing yourself to others, you won't gain anything besides sadness. She said that Kathleen and her husband James were a good couple. They always made time for each other, and even after 20 years of marriage, they still prioritized their relationship. Nowadays, such commitment is rare among couples. Kathleen thought about the activities she and James had recently done together. They had gone hiking and had a picnic. A few days ago, they had also ridden bikes together. Not every couple has such a bond with their partner. After hearing all this from her mother-in-law, a lovely smile appeared on Kathleen's face. Yes, they didn't have the money to go to Europe, and they might never have enough money to buy new electronics and gadgets for their home, but still, Kathleen and her family were extremely happy to have each other. My Open Heart Davina was talking to a plastic surgeon when the surgeon noticed something strange. There was a scar-like mark on Davina's shoulder. Davina told the surgeon that the mark extended to her navel. This mark was due to Davina's open-heart surgery in childhood. The surgeon saw it and asked Davina if she wanted to remove it to get rid of it. Davina was surprised to hear this but declined directly. She liked this mark very much. When Davina was a child, she had to undergo open-heart surgery. When she was born, she had a lot of problems. First of all, even after six months, her weight was only six pounds. Her mother had to feed her with a dropper. In childhood, Davina could not even move much. She couldn't even crawl. If she had crawled, she could have hurt her chest more if she fell. Unfortunately, even after escaping from such serious operations, a burden remains on them. The pressure 
to live a happy life. What's the point of getting a second chance in life? What does it mean? When it's Davina's birthday, she thinks about her purpose. She thinks she should be grateful for the second life she got. She wonders if she is on the right path. The life she is living now, is she worthy of it? It took her some time to find the answer, but she did find it. Now Davina's mission in life is to help those whose hearts are broken. It may sound strange to hear, but this is the truth. Davina tries to fill the holes or shortcomings in their hearts with kindness. She also forgives those who have wronged her because everyone deserves a second chance. A Gift of Time Edith Sherman was 50 years old when she wrote a letter to Dr. Michael DeBecky, a renowned surgeon. Edith began her letter by talking about her family. She had spent most of her marriage caring for her husband, who had been ill for ten years. Three years ago, he passed away. Edith had tried her best to support her husband and three children alone. Thanks to a scholarship, both her sons were able to go to college. She took pride in how she had kept her family together, but now Edith was struggling with her own illness. She had a blockage in a crucial artery of her heart that required surgery to remove. Such an operation was not routine. Dr. Michael DeBecky was one of the few people who had successfully performed it. Edith wrote to the doctor asking if he could perform her surgery. She knew that the doctor probably received requests like hers every day, but Edith felt that she should at least ask Dr. DeBecky once. A week later, Edith received her answer. He said that knowing what she had done for her family, performing her operation would be an honor for him. He also said that he would perform her surgery for free. After that, Edith went to Houston, where Dr. DeBecky lived. Her surgery was successful, as were the subsequent operations. Because of this, Edith lived for 30 more years, and in those 30 years, she never wasted a moment of her life. Edith became more involved in her community. She even became the chairperson of the Stamford Urban Renewal Commission. She made significant changes in her community, completely transforming the lives of the people there. She was also awarded the Citizen of the Year Award for her work. Edith bid farewell to the world at the age of 82. Before she left, she remained dedicated to her work but it wasn't a burden for her because she enjoyed what she was doing. Though Edith is no longer with us, her legacy will always remain alive. She truly lived her life to the fullest. The Joy of Dirty Dishes Jessica was looking at the pile of dirty dishes in front of her. Countless dishes were spread out in the kitchen sink. Either her husband or her children had used all of them. Some people might find this stressful, but Jessica liked seeing the dirty dishes. Don't get it wrong, Jessica used to hate seeing a sink filled with dirty dishes. It was the most exhausting task. But when she went to the doctor, everything changed completely. Jessica was pregnant and used to visit her doctor for regular checkups. That day, she was going to find out whether she was having a boy or a girl. She and her husband had already decided that if it was a girl, they would name her Jane, and if it was a boy, Elijah. When the doctor revealed that she was expecting twins, she was astonished. On the screen, she could see two tiny babies swimming in her belly. Jessica's eyes welled up with tears. She had been blessed with twins as a form of blessing. However, there was a problem. Jessica's doctor told her that her twins were monoamniotic. This meant that Jessica's twins shared one placenta and one amniotic sac. This was extremely dangerous because their umbilical cords could become entangled with each other. If the cords got twisted, it could cut off the oxygen supply and they could die. 
The only way to ensure that this didn't happen was for Jessica to stay in the hospital. This way, the doctor could monitor the heartbeat of the twins. If there was any irregularity in the heartbeat of either one, the doctor could save the twins' lives through a C-section. Jessica and her husband decided that she should stay in the hospital. It was the safest option for the twins. Jessica stayed in the hospital for several weeks. During this time, she missed her two children and husband a lot, and she also missed her home. During this time, Jessica also remembered washing dishes. Because of not being able to follow her normal routine and not being able to see her family, you become restless to live your normal life. Due to staying in the hospital, Jessica realized how lucky she was to have a family waiting eagerly for her return home, and yes, even dirty dishes taught her to be grateful. In the end, Jessica was able to give birth to her dear twins safely. In their home, there is now more noise and laughter. Especially, there are more dirty dishes to wash. But Jessica never gets frustrated seeing them. Instead, she feels happy and blessed. A Journey to Myself We all want a purpose in our lives. If there is no guidance, we have to find our purpose somehow. Some people immediately understand their purpose, while others take years to understand it. Daniel realized his purpose when he fell ill. Daniel had AIDS, which led to him developing a rare type of pneumonia. Daniel's weight had also decreased, he kept getting fevers, and he had to deal with allergies due to different medications. Every day was like a battle for Daniel. Because of this, he had to stay in bed for many months. He swore that if he survived, he would do something meaningful for the world. Helping others would be his purpose. Then Daniel decided that he had to stay alive at all costs. Slowly, he started getting better. When he improved, Daniel began volunteering for a nonprofit organization that dealt with HIV AIDS cases. Daniel learned a lot more about his condition. Initially, people with HIV AIDS were seen as untouchables and infected individuals. Besides its symptoms, they also had to deal with emotional pain. Daniel slowly accepted himself. Because of the disease, he was not worthy of disgust or hatred. He deserved the love and care that others were giving him. These were the lessons he taught to people affected by HIV AIDS as well. Daniel fully immersed himself in the field of HIV AIDS. He became a tester, counselor, and care specialist. He has received many awards for his work. But all these awards pale in comparison to the happiness and satisfaction he gets from helping people struggling with this disease. Conclusion You have learned about different challenges that people face in their lives. When going through tough situations, it is okay to feel lonely. But remember that many people have faced these same situations and have overcome them. These people have not achieved success just by showing bravery, but they have tackled their problems and challenges from a different perspective, which has helped them. Some people see something as a problem, but others see it as an opportunity to be grateful. For example, Alicia used to hate it when she was young because she didn't have much money, but when her mother made cartoons for her, she realized how much her mother loved her. And Helen, who learned to appreciate her life by becoming a blessing for others at least five times a day. She felt that this practice made her even more positive and happy. Most importantly, it also helped her to spread positivity to others. By changing your perspective, your character improves and it also helps you to overcome challenges. Being grateful for what you have makes you realize how you take things for granted. What you have right now can be taken away from you at any moment. Therefore, 
you should make it a goal to be grateful for at least five things every day, no matter how small they may be. By doing this, you will see how this simple practice has the power to change your life.